Alrighty guys, this is Andrew, and today we got some really exciting stuff. Uh, yesterday, July 19th, 2016, uh, there was a new patch in Overwatch, pretty big one I would say, with the introduction of Ana and a bunch of hero balance changes that a lot of people were asking for. And it's been on the PTR for quite some time, and it's finally hitting live servers. A lot of people are happy about the changes, I think, overall. Now, uh, I figure at this point most people will probably know what the balance changes were and what the patch pretty much consisted of. So what I'm going to do is just link the patch notes down below and then just kind of go over some more interesting points that stuck out to me here in this video. Now most of the stuff I'm going to be talking about will be uh, hero balance related, though if there's like a specific topic that you guys really want me to talk about, let me know down in the comments and you know, if we have enough people requesting, I will make a video about it. But let's just get right into this guys. And top of the list for me is the D.Va changes. Now her defense matrix, I'm sure you guys all know by now, has been changed to be more like Reinhardt's shield. Now before, it was an ability that you would just use, and then it will have a duration, and it'll go away. Not not that much flexibility. But now, with the new with the new mechanic, it has like a, uh, a resource meter, where you can kind of toggle the shield on and off with a one second cooldown. And this flexibility, you know, this kind of ability to micromanage the shield, really opens up a lot of possibilities for D.Va, because if you've managed the cooldown correctly, you know, very rarely would you be in a situation where you, where you wouldn't have at least some little bit of your defense matrix duration up. So this gives D.Va a lot of survivability. Now the other thing that they decided to add to D.Va's changes would be the self-destruct. Uh, basically, the most important stuff to me anyways is that the explosion delay is reduced by one second, so now it's three seconds before it explodes. And while this may not seem like a lot of time on paper, holy cow guys, I've been landing a lot more kills with D.Va's ulti than before. Before it used to be like a um, more of like a distraction type ult, a type of ult that will just make people run for cover, maybe put them out of position for a little bit. But most people, if they were smart, were able to get away just because it depended so much on line of sight. However, with that one second shaved off, I feel like I'm landing a lot more kills because enemies don't have as much time to react. Uh, the explosion damage no longer affects D.Va, and I know <laughs> in the background footage you'll see me have like PTSD and just run away from the explosion, uh, but it, it doesn't actually kill D.Va anymore. So now you have the option to do damage while you're in pilot mode, which I think is an awesome addition. Uh, the other change that I want to mention would be to McCree. Now McCree, he, he's been through some rough times ever since his fan, the hammer, got nerfed, but now they're bringing back his range. Now his Peacekeeper, the left click, will now the primary fire will now hit for 70 damage, full damage at longer distances, making him a complete mid-range, almost kind of long-range monster. I mean, if you if you have good accuracy, you, you can now snipe some snipers. So some people are saying this is a little too powerful, but in my opinion, I think this is a pretty good spot for McCree. He feels much more viable, I mean, for a little bit there, uh, not McCree, Soldier 76 was taking McCree's spot as the mid-range slash maybe long-range damage dealer, but now that McCree has his uh, no damage or very little damage drop-off back on his left click, which will do 70 damage uh, or 140 damage on headshots, you know, he becomes that character that relies on aim and really, really rewards high aim players and so I think this change is great uh, some people are saying it's a little too strong but um, just from my point of view because it's so aim based you know to be able to do that reliable headshot damage you do have to have pretty decent aim to uh, land those headshots I think McCree feels pretty good right now in this current iteration because he still has that CQC power to kill squishies up close with fan and he has some longer range viability without actually you know just destroying everyone like how he used to do with no damage drop off you know next up we have mercy and in my opinion mercy didn't really need a change I don't really know why blizzard decided to fuck with mercy but um Stuff that changed were the damage boost no longer stacks. I mean, whoever really did that, I didn't see that that much, especially in uh, especially in competitive. I didn't see people stacking damage boosts. Now, the interesting stuff is the resurrect. Uh, it now costs thirty percent more. Though, to be honest, I didn't really even notice the increased cost. I mean, I could feel it a little bit, but in my opinion, I mean, just healing allies who are taking a lot of damage, especially tanks who just soak up damage, like it wasn't that hard to charge back up. 
Mercy definitely did get a slight buff as far as survivability in the form of being able to move while she resurrects people, so I definitely think this adds a new little layer to Mercy play, you know, makes her a little bit more speedy and mobile, though to be honest guys, in my personal experience, I've never really had an issue with her standing still, like I never was like, oh man, I wish I could move while I'm ulting, like, I, I don't know, it never was really that big of an issue for me, but hey, I mean, if Blizzard thinks it was a good idea, and obviously they thought it was enough to put it into live servers maybe there was a valid reason I don't know maybe some of you guys can enlighten me down in the comments but for me I don't think Mercy really needed that much change I mean maybe the alt did charge up too fast but I don't know let me know down in the comments again what you guys think all right moving on to the last hero and that is gonna be Zenyatta now this one is kind of the most talked about change at least from my experience just reading through the subreddits and stuff because everyone was looking forward to the day when this shiny little robot will come back into glory so long time ago they decided to nerf his orbs to last only three seconds outside of line of sight and now they've kind of taken a different direction with them right he was always that uh, how would I describe Zenyatta he was always that squishy support healer-ish type guy who did a shit ton of damage um i mean to be honest when i first installed overwatch and i like went through all different heroes i was like all right i'm gonna learn zenyana because he's fucking awesome because i love his design i love that he's a support that can kick some serious ass and to be honest i've always had like a soft spot in my heart for this guy so once I heard that they're buffing this hero, I got really excited. So basically what they've done was increase his health or his HP to 200, giving him an extra 50 shields, which is fantastic because that stuff regenerates. So he's even more independent now. Like he doesn't even need to be healed that much. You know, most of the time he'll just be able to regenerate his, uh, his HP. Now his primary weapon damage was decreased from 45 down to 40 and the alternate fire weapon damage was increased from 35 up to 40. In my opinion, I don't see a point in this because who the fuck ever used the alternate fire? I, I don't know, maybe I'll get a lot of hate for this, but I was always a primary fire type guy for Zenyatta. Like I found that much more reliable as far as landing shots. Um, so I kind of don't like how they nerfed the 45. I guess, yes, he do always have Discord Orb to do that extra damage, but I don't know. I just feel like the damage changes were a little unnecessary. If it was up to me, like if I had to choose between a 175 HP Zenyatta with the original damage of 45 versus this Zenyatta, I'd probably take the uh, the 175 Zenyatta just because I love the damage. Like any piece of damage on this character, I'll take. Um, the cool thing though is that Transcendence got a massive buff. You move a lot faster when you're using Transcendence so you can get to the action a lot quicker. Uh, basically it's it's actually quite nice because this way you can kind of get into the action a lot faster given that Zenyatta shouldn't be in the front lines anyways it kind of meshes well with his character design now the healing amount was increased from 200 to 300 health per second holy shit that's like really really strong guys um, the idea behind this according to them was that they wanted to make it so that it, Transcendence can tank a lot more damage like it, it would basically be an automatic win team fight kind of thing uh, in my opinion I don't know if this was necessary but hey I'll take it you know like I never heard anyone complain like oh shit Zenyatta just doesn't doesn't heal enough during his Transcendence like I, I never really heard those kind of complaints about the character but hey look I love Zenyatta you guys love Zenyatta I'm down for more healing it's just I wasn't sure I mean come on look 300 HP per second that's a lot dude that's a lot and the, and the ulti lasts for like what six seconds or something it's it's a lot of healing so I don't know I'm not complaining guys I love Zenyatta like these changes are great but um, I don't know who knows maybe we'll see Zenyatta get toned down a little bit either way you know I trust Blizzard will make the right decision as far as balancing heroes and stuff like that they, they've been doing a pretty good job overall so far that's about it for today guys um, I just did a quick rundown of the of the hero changes that really interested me and really stuck out to me. If you guys want me to kind of go over anything else in this patch, uh, please let me know down in the comments and I'll make a separate video for that if there's enough people who care f to hear my opinion on something. But I guess until next time, I'll see you around.